two-time All-Star, A's and Cardinals standout starter Mark Mulder. Mark, it's Brian Kenny. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, you got it. How you doing? Uh, uh, we're doing well. Back at work. Your thoughts uh, on everything yeah. that's happened and now baseball getting back to summer camp and trying to get the season underway. What are your thoughts there? Well, I, I like to see that they're doing something. I think something's better than nothing. Um, you know, I know it's 60 days, so I think the one thing, it's going to be much more of a sprint than it is a marathon. There's going to be no holding back. Um, I wouldn't be shocked to see teams, your number one, number two guys, maybe skipping the fifth guy here and there. So maybe those number one, number two guys are staying on there every single fifth day so you can maximize their amount of starts. Um, the one thing I think for me, I, I just hope with only what I think it's about three weeks they have to get ready. I know a lot of them have been throwing and doing other stuff leading up to it, but you can't, you can't, sim games are not spring training games. You know, you don't have that, that same energy. You don't have sometimes maybe that same focus. So I just hope I don't see anybody get injured. I, I don't want to see a pitcher blow out some number one, number two guy. You, you, that's the, the one thing I fear, fear for is, is some big injury happening, maybe because guys aren't quite physically ready. Yeah, with the time off, um, it's funny, in the players that I talk to, Mark, I mean, like greater society, everybody kind of shut it down. We, we always think, well, players you know, will always be throwing. They have their regimen, their training. These days especially, they're always in training. But yeah. a lot of them did really shut it down and stay in hunkered down with the family. What do you think that effect will be, given that they had a bit of spring training and now it's a couple of months off and now it's back to throwing again? Well, I mean, I think, like you said, everybody took probably at least a few weeks and, and didn't do a whole lot. I'm sure a lot of guys have some gyms maybe in their homes and mounds they could go throw at at a local school with a buddy or something. But to be fair, you don't know if everyone did that. And so when you come in for just these three weeks, you just hope guys are prepared. Uh, you hope they're ready. I was talking to a few guys on the course today. It's going to be interesting to see because if they have three weeks and they're pitching to their own guys – you know, if you're trying to work on a pitch that's up and in or off the plate, the last thing you want to do is hit your own teammate mm -hmm. and possibly injure the guy. So, you know, sometimes for a pitcher, you need those spring training reps against other teams in order to have that pitch ready to get a guy off the plate or whatever need be. So when you're throwing to your own guys, it's not that easy to commit to that pitch when the last thing you want to do is hurt one of your teammates. Mark, we were talking about it earlier. It's, it's obviously a shorter season, but it's not like one week. Like, how, how to form yeah. do you think it will be, or how different do you think it will be as far as teams that you wouldn't expect being able to make a run or a super team maybe not being able to establish that? Yeah, I, I, well, both of those things, what you said. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a less talented team who maybe gets hot for five, six weeks of those eight weeks and slides into a playoff spot to where if it was over a season – you know, there's always those teams that hover around 500 or maybe a few, few, uh, few games above 500, and then the all-star break comes and, and they kind of fall apart uh, because maybe they're not deep enough or whatever the case may be. This isn't going to factor that. You're not going to have to worry about being deep. You're not going to have to worry about a lot of things that you're, you'd have to worry about over a six-month season when you just have eight weeks to kind of go all in on it. You know what's funny is I think your 2001 team was like just under 560 games in, and then you won over 100 games. The A's still do that, yeah. Mark. Like they're always like a little slow start. You know, they're hovering around 500, and then boom, in the second half. Why is that? Sometimes there's teams, sometimes certain uh, lineups, or you have to find your role. Uh, sometimes the first couple of months of a season, the lineup's getting shuffled around a lot because – Maybe there's a surprise guy who started hitting seventh or eighth in the lineup who's having a great year and he's slowly working his way up. Or some, some minor league guy that you didn't expect to do a whole lot, now he's in the starting lineup. So sometimes it takes till the all-star break for people to, to understand their role, of whether it's in a bullpen. You know, who's going to be that seventh or eighth inning guy? I know a lot of that's changed a little bit, but like I said, with it being so short, I wouldn't be surprised if these teams are going to maximize their one and two guy. Um, they're going to use their bullpen the, the minute they need to. There's a big situation. You're going to see closers coming in early because each of these wins this first, let's say, month of the season is going to be that much more important because you're not going to have time to gain ground on teams. No question. In a larger form moving forward, which pitching model do you think will take over, if, if either? Kind of the Nationals model. And, look, we saw the Nationals, Nationals, powerhouse rotations, or the Rays who are, like, had a, you know, top two guys and then extremely flexible the rest of the way doing kind of a bullpen attack. What do you see moving forward? 
I think it depends who you have on your, on your staff, what type of a pitcher you have. You know, the Rays don't have those number one, number two guys, or at least not that I can think of off the top of my head, but you don't, they don't have a Garrett Cole. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, the only difference is that worries me is there's less and less guys throwing 200 innings every single year. And this take out this year, I know every year prior it's getting less and less. So it seems a lot of those teams are trending in that direction. And I think when you see guys like Scherzer, Verlander, or some of these horses, Kershaw, um, these 200 inning guys, they might go away. And you might not see it very often. I mean, 170, 180 might be a limit for some guys. And you're just going to see a, a rotation of guys, it, it, it's not, not really a one through five. It's just going to be a pitching staff. And they might just make it up as they go along uh, as the season dictates. And Mark, I just mentioned, uh, as we saw the clips there, it doesn't seem that long ago for me, you know, Mulder, Hudson, Zito, that rotation. How different does yeah. baseball look to you from then when, right, everything was 200, 220 innings and up, and now that is just not done. How different does it seem only in 15, 20 years? Well, it, it doesn't seem drastically different. I think the biggest thing for me is, and it's not a lot of these young guys' fault. I feel that a lot of them are taught in the minor leagues or taught when they're younger that five, six, seven innings, hey, kid, you did a great job. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I was doing TV stuff with the A's, I, I was watching pitchers. They'd, they'd go out for the seventh inning, and they were looking in the bullpen like, hey, why is no one up? And they might have been six innings, two hits, no runs. <laughs> right. And you're sitting there right. as a competitor up there watching TV going, why are, why are they looking in the bullpen? Why are they waiting to get taken out? But – that's just kind of the, the culture of minor league baseball, five, six innings, and, and they're done. And so it's not really their fault because they get to the big leagues and they haven't gone eight or nine innings uh, because teams aren't allowing them to, which I totally understand, and that's fine. But that's, to me, that's the biggest difference. And it's, in a way, I love throwing complete games. I love finishing what I started. So it's disappointing seeing that in some of the starters. And that doesn't mean that they don't want to finish these games. It's just they haven't. So they're not being allowed to do it. Mark Mulder, again, former uh, Oakland A. They're joining us from Lake Tahoe. In case anyone's wondering, wow, Mark Mulder, he's got a nice backyard. Look at that. It's a whole lake and the power boats. <laughs> I'll let people just watch that. Mark, I know you're a good golfer, so we'll let you enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks for joining us today, and uh, hopefully we'll see you down the road. Thanks for having me. Appreciate oh. it.